Imagine funds weren't an issue and you wanted to build the ultimate off-road 911. Who do you call first? Well, if you want it to look as exquisite as this thing and be ready for anything, up to and including the Dakar Rally, you want it designed by Singer and engineered by Tuthill Porsche, and that's what this is. The ACS, a reimagined 964 911 where imaginations were allowed to run wild and free. What is it that makes this car so special? Everything, really. It might start life as a rusty 964, but beyond that, the mission was to create a zero compromise off-road racer. It uses a twin turbo air-cooled 3.6 litre flat six, developing somewhere between 450 and 600 brake horsepower. There's permanent four wheel drive, a sequential five speed gearbox, twin wishbones and twin dampers at each corner to share the load and improve reliability, almost 300 millimeters of suspension travel and a massive 180 litre fuel capacity split between a main and two saddle tanks. Proper race car stuff. But race cars tend to be a little bit ratty around the edges because they only need to work. They don't necessarily need to look good. Whereas the attention to detail on this thing is just off the charts. We've obviously done our best to ruin it by covering it in a layer of sand and grime, but still we need to have a look at these details. And the first one is here, this bumper, there's one at the back too, milled from a single piece of aluminium. You might remember that the first car we saw had these horizontal mud flaps, almost like fangs that stuck out the front of the car. Those have been ditched somewhere along the way and I don't blame them, I think they were a bit too funky for me. You've got these knacker ducks in the top of the front arches, 16 inch wheels, massive off-road tyres. All the panels by the way are carbon fibre and around the back is where it gets really interesting. You've got this gorgeous wraparound section which is a, a nod to the 959 but what I want to show you is this rear clamshell. There's one at the front tube and it lifts up, the entire rear of the car lifts up exposing all the good bits underneath and I'm going to need my glamorous assistant for this, thank you very much. One bolt on that side, there we go, one on the other and hopefully it won't fall down and chop my fingers off. And there, you get an unimpeded view of an unnecessarily pretty engine, which is also covered in a lot of sand. Also through here, you'll notice the second spare wheel. There's another one in the front. To get to that, you need to remove that rear screen. And I should say, the reason why this is so heavy is because there's a cooling system integrated into it. There's a radiator up here. You can see, this is the optional handbrake, a rock behind the rear tire, nice touch. 
Now we need to look on the inside because the interior of the ACS, it plays tricks with your mind. Right, climbing into the ACS, you don't need to be a gymnast, but it does help. Let's just get my bum in there and my leg. Right, close that up and put my steering wheel on like that. Yes, so as you can see, you've got paddles behind the wheel to shift gear or you can use this shifter in the middle. And right here, the thing that's probably blocking half your shot there, this is the drift brake, the hydraulic handbrake. Um, so there's two sides to this interior, really. It's on one hand, a stripped out race car. You've got FIA approved bucket seats. You've got a full roll cage. But on the other hand, it's quite playful. There's loads of nice little design touches like this orange paint spatter design over here. And you've got these saddle bags to put all your essentials in. Let's see what we got in here. Gaffer tape. And what I also like is there's signs of wear. There's patina in here. This owner has clearly been using this car properly. Bit of gaffer tape here, a bit of a button missing, but it doesn't matter. This car is a workhorse, is designed to be driven. It just happens to look very, very cool indeed. And what do you think about this neon orange color scheme? A couple of neon lights. We could be in a laser quest from the 90s. Honestly, clean it up and you could hang this thing in an art gallery. But instead, we get to do this. This car was just made to slide. Now there's two ways that you can do it. The first is just tip it into a corner with a little bit too much speed. Wait for the back end to come around. Come on. Here it comes. Here it comes. And then dial in the opposite lock. Oh, that's probably the faster way. But there's also this stick here in front of you, and that's the hydraulic handbrake. So if we slow it down a bit, tip it in, clutch in. Oh, yes! Look at that! I'm living out my WRC fantasies. And there's night and day difference between this thing and the 911 Dakar. The 911 Dakar, yeah, it's got more wheel travel, it's a bit tougher, it will take you places that a standard 911 can't. But ultimately, it feels a lot like a normal 911. This thing just moves in a different way. The way it rolls and pitches and dives under braking. There's so much more movement. Look at it. It just feels more organic. It feels more alive. It's just such a fabulous, fabulous experience. I can't, I can't smile any more than this. I found driving Nirvana. But when you've got hundreds of thousands of acres to play in, it's a shame to stick to just one lake then. Here's a top tip. If you're going to be punting somebody else's multi-million pound car around in the desert, visibility is key. That should hold, sort of. In fact, it's an improvement. Look at that. Looks like some sort of giant Tamiya RC car. Right, time to find a bit more undulation and variety. Ha ha! Yep, that's much more like it. Giving these twin dampers a proper workout. Now, when I first met this car, I got a tour of it from Richard Tuthill at his Oxfordshire workshop about two years ago. I asked him, I said, what's the point in the twin dampers? And he said, basically, it's so you can hit big stuff and laugh. Well, I don't have any intention of hitting any big stuff today, but I am laughing quite a lot. <laughs> yes, this ACS is absolutely ridiculous amounts of money when you can build your own off-road 911 that can go even further for a lot less. But the fact that there's a company building these things coaxing old cars back into life and giving them new and interesting superpowers, catering to people's dreams. Well, I'm all for it. The 911 really is the most remarkable car, isn't it? It's hard to believe that Porsche's current range goes all the way from the 911 Dakar to the downforce crazed GT3 RS, and even the old ones can morph into Frankenstein creations like this. That's a 
suppose Porsche 911 have always had pretty good rally car fundamentals, haven't they? Uh, stiff chassis, independent suspension, an engine, and therefore weight and traction over the rear axle. But still, to have something that is this exquisitely built and this ruthlessly capable, it's just such a rare thing. And can we please give it up for the owner of this ACS, not only because he uses this car properly himself, but because he gave us, little us, the chance to experience the majesty of the ACS for ourselves. It's a pretty unforgettable privilege. Jack, I'm a cynic, but that looked like a lot of fun, I have to admit. Although I would be terrified driving that thing around like that. Yeah, I was absolutely bricking it, you know, um, driving someone else's multi-million pound car. And the thing about that thing, you need to be driving it hard to get the most out of it. So it's probably only the second half of the day, once I got used to it, that I was really feeling the suspension working properly. And then, ah. Oh, it's pure magic, and I handed it back in one piece. Yeah, well, well done for that. Normally I'd be disappointed, but not in that case. Okay, so this is the 911 Dakar. Mm -hmm. So if you're just a millionaire, not a billionaire, this is where you get your fun off-road in a 911. I've spent no time with this at all, but just being around it, I'm more into it than I thought I would be. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, you, the livery on this one with the rough roads, not Rothman's writing down the side. Bit dodgy, but yeah, I got to drive this thing in Morocco. It's mega. I love it. You know, driving on dirt, I'm not like the handiest race driver in the world, but I can just slide this thing for days. And it is just, yeah, it's just great fun. I absolutely love it. Only downside, it doesn't come with a manual gearbox. And I know that's something that really annoys you. Annoys is the wrong word, but I do feel like we are traveling very far down a path where all we care about is performance, launch yeah. control, etc. And cars are so quick now, what you really want is involvement and that tactile feel you get with a car or, yeah. Um, <laughs> and there is only one way to be fully immersed in a driving experience and that's with a manual gearbox. Of course. So in this next film, I'm gonna prove, I hope, that manuals beat autos every time. Manual gearboxes rule, we all know that. So why is it that Americans get more of them than us Europeans? We have here the 473 horsepower BMW M3 and the 668 horsepower Cadillac CT5 Blackwing, both of which, you've guessed it, have manual gearboxes. And today we're at the track to prove one thing, manuals are just better and we deserve more of them in the UK, which is why I've put Jack in a comparable sort of car, but with an auto box. Um, Jethro, I, I, I do have an automatic gearbox, but this doesn't seem awfully fair. Well, do you have a clutch pedal? Negative. Do you have a gear lever that you have to stir around? Nope. Okay, so manual v auto, that's what we're doing here. Three, two, one, go! Oh, well, we're off. I love the no-lift shift and M3 is gone. Woo -hoo -hoo! In the cross the line. Looked like a bit of a scalp for the caddy there. This thing is so rapid. You have to tickle it off the line with like maybe 1500, 1800 revs, uh, but then it's just an absolute rocket ship. It's got an onboard timer. I did 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds, apparently. It felt bang on perfect. Yeah, I had a great view of that from 150 meters further back. Um, I'd like to say you have to tickle the Maverick off the line, but she just goes. But the advantage of an automatic or dual clutch is only enhanced when you throw corners into the mix. At least that's what we're led to believe. Let's find out on the simply fabulous Apex Motor Club track. What a playground this place is. 
Anyway, once again, it's Jack in the theoretically faster automatic. How does he always get the easy gig? Three, two, one, go. Oh, fantastic launch. Zero wheel spin, zero wasted energy. Here we come. Oh, hello understeer. Let's see if he catches any dirt, any dust. Take a lot of curb. Come on, we got off-road tires. Woo -hoo. Tight right hander. Oh, go. A little bit wide there. Come on, back on the throttle. Right, down the chicane. Actually, sod that chicane. That'll save me a bit of time. I have to say, from the outside looking in, that was pretty impressive. Thank you. I have to say, it was pretty impressive from where I was sitting too. Scores on the doors and the time to beat is 2 minutes, 19.09. And with zero to compare it to, that's pretty much a lap record for Top Gear. I'll take it. So we have our target. In Jethro's world, all the M3 and Blackwing need to do is beat the Maverick to claim a glorious victory for manual gearboxes. Me? I'm more intrigued to see if the Caddy can live with Europe's finest sports saloon. Three, two, one. Pretty much the same as the Maverick, right? Turn the ESC off and then just have a little bit of traction assist. It feels so light into the far chicane. This is not the competition. So I do not have all the sexy stuff. The seats are awful. I've got steel brakes. Any driving challenge he'll take very, very seriously. He'll pretend to the camera that we're having fun, but nah, he wants to win. Such a lovely car to drive. <laughs> that was pretty good. I think I needed another gear there. It's my first lap at speed around this track. So, okay, Jack, what's the damage? Uh, it starts with a one, so you can rest easy. One minute 52.52, so uh, what's that? 27 seconds quicker? <laughs> Is it really? That's hilarious. I love it. Okay, Jethro, have you got your big boy pants on? I'm actually wearing your pants. I didn't want to tell you, but um, I ran out of clean ones. I also ran out of clean ones three days ago, so joke's on you. Are you ready? 152 to beat. Three, two, one, go! Feels immediately heavier than the M3. Much longer geared as well. It's hilarious, this guy. You can't miss a shift because everyone within a two mile radius can hear it. Bit cautious on the way in. That's the only way to do it. And then let the engine go. It's heavier car, better brakes, more power. Is it going to even itself out? Minute and a half, 152 to beat. It's so much weight and power. It's so hard to be smooth with it. I didn't think it'd be that quick. <laughs> Whoa! That was not good. Wow, this thing's hard work. It's even hotter, I think. Right, you ready to hear your fate? Yeah, I can tell you what I, my thoughts are if you want. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's the heat's got to the engine or something. It doesn't feel as bombastic down the straight a little bit and then definitely heavier in the corners. So I think it might be a bit slower. You're right, it did it in two minutes. What note? No, I'm joking. <laughs> 1 minute 52.01. Half a second quicker. Wow, that's pretty good. It was not by any means my best lap, but that's pretty cool to have such different cars come in so close. Um, yeah, wow, I'm impressed because it did not feel like a very clean experience. Uh, M3 is a better track car, I think it's fair to say. Okay, so this is the final challenge and probably my favourite. This is the drift challenge. So, if you have a look, you can see Jack over there. Jack's always in the Maverick. Um, 
way off in the distance. And the idea is this corner here, he's not gonna start sliding straight away. He's not gonna start sliding at all, but the others two hopefully will. Gonna start sliding mid this first left-hander. It tightens up, it's really wicked. Then it turns right, hard right. Big drift through there, get that transition. There's then quite a long straight before a very fast chicane, which then leads into this long, long, long right-hander up onto the curb, up onto the dust for style points. It is a huge challenge in any car. Um, and on that note, let's see how Jack does in a Ford Maverick Tremor. Jack. Yes. You know the course. You know that thing intimately by now, as you haven't driven anything else today. <laughs> so do your work. I can't help but feel I've been thrown under the bus here. Well, all I can say is, imagine if you did make this work, you'd be literally a hero, a god, in fact. So, uh, yeah, go for it. All right, stand back. Stand back. <laughs> the ambition is brilliant. Okay, chances of me getting this thing sideways, less than none, I'd say. Here we come, first corner, tightening, turning on the brakes. Oh, that's a lot of understeer. Oh, that's a whole heap of understeer. This is the problem with autos, you see. No clutch control, can't kick it into life. All right, we'll get it right on the chicane, I reckon. Bit of angle here. Oh, a little something, I mean, I've just got no chance of getting it sideways on the tarmac. I tell you what, stick it on the gravel. That's how we do it. <laughs> yeah. There's a little bit of angle there, I think. A little something. did get a transition going, but it looked more like a crash than a deliberate thing. All good camera shots look like you're crashing. You learned that, that's a journalism school, day one. Without a manual gearbox, obviously, you struggled a little with the control in terms of you couldn't kick it into lie. That's it, I couldn't clutch kick it. If I had the clutch kick, I'd be, I reckon I would have linked that all up. Yeah. So otherwise you would have been uh, all over it. So another demerit for the auto. Let's give it a go in the manuals. Great car, hampered by the box. Do you want to drive the M3? No, no, don't worry about that. I'll yeah, get in the no, M3. Be, no, no, I'd love to, actually. No, no, no. I'll do the M3 and then that the Caddy. Is that, is that, come back. Okay, I see you've left the Caddy till last. Probably a wise move. First attempt, he's got this. The first transition is easy in second, but I'm gonna run out of steam. So I wanna do it in third, but I think in third, it's gonna make me look like a monkey because it's really tough to get it all right. Oh my God. Oh the hell. <laughs> for dust for the cameras. So I think the Caddy has two advantages. One, second gear is longer. Two, it has 670 horsepower. <laughs> Which is always an advantage. <laughs> right. Good man. Okay, Caddy, caddy time. good whipper. <laughs> That's weird, it felt so good. Wow, there's so much weight. Wow, it felt so good for a minute there, but the extra weight of the caddy definitely whips on you very quickly. Yeah, it looked like when that came back around, you got to be on your toes, because that's a lot of tonnage. Okay, come on, Jeff, right? Whoa, not enough, it's too scared.
hell. <laughs> How did that feel? <laughs> I think I pretty much nailed it. I think there was one tiny bit in the middle. I was like, oh, is it going to straighten? But I think I might have got away with that. I was very, very excited with my own incredible abilities. <laughs> I think that's the biggest smile I've seen um, all week on you. Wow, that was mega. What an absolute beast. If I had a real drifter's brain, I wouldn't have tried to extend the drift all the way along the straight between turns two and three, but instead added a fake transition to keep the car sliding. But I guess the point was to see which car could be coaxed and teased to slide even where it shouldn't. And this one is a clear win for the mighty caddy. Let's forget that an auto might have made it easier and revel in the fact that the manual box takes a deeply challenging idea and makes it even harder, but way more satisfying too. Is there no end to the advantages held by the manual gearbox? I think we can conclusively say autos are basically the death of fun. Obviously we've been having fun in this video. I didn't really think that we could prove manual gearboxes were better than autos by including a Ford Maverick. Although the crew have forced me to say that they love this car and they really do. It's been the behind the scenes hero of all of our shoots. Really what I wanted to do was tell you and remind even myself just how good a manual gearbox is. The auto versions of both of these cars would have been quicker in a straight line, quicker around the track and probably easier for that drift because I could have hit an upshift in the middle of it all and it would have all looked very glorious. But I don't care. I don't care if I'm a bit slower in a manual. The point is it involves you. It really just sucks you into the driving experience. And in a world where we're getting further and further away from great performance and driver's cars and we can see this EV future just over the horizon, it's great to know that you can still buy these cars and I implore you to do so. Manual gearboxes do rule. End of story. Fair flipping play, Jethro. That drift in the caddy was absolutely immense. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> best thing you can ever do in a car. I had a great time, what a thing. But the camera crew, who mess around all day, expect me to just get in the car and then... I feel your pain because I was expected to put that Ford Maverick on a dime all day long. And I haven't forgiven you, by the way, for sticking me in a pickup truck while you got to have all the smoky fun in the rear wheel drive stuff. Yeah, but look at it this way. You were an incredibly important part of that video. Without your ineptitude, we would never have proven that the manual gearbox is better than the auto. All right, I, I'll take that as my ego sufficiently massaged. We'll call it a truce and move on to what's coming up in the next episode where I'll be driving a completely stock Jeep Wrangler up a vicious off-road trail in Moab. And I get to take one man's pride and joy, a beautiful hand-built Ford Mustang and drive it like I stole it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.